Hello, everybody. Today we're talking about this particular Jumbo Peter coat by Ray Cohen's. My reasoning into why I purchased this because it's so expensive. You could actually buy a used car for the price that is is going for retail. And I picked it up on sale and it's still really expensive. So we're going to be talking a little bit longer about this since it's so expensive. I want to share all my thoughts and uh, way of thinking from the moment that I saw this piece for a good price a while ago and all the way up to like right now and why I'm keeping this into my collection. So we're going to be talking about everything, sizing, pricing, uh, how this fits, feels, is it comfortable, is it too big, is it impractical? All of those things will be addressed in this video and um, yeah, bear with me, it's going to be longer, but if you're really interested in this coat, I wish there would be a video like this before I actually purchased it. So I could keep all those things into account. That's the way I like to create those videos from a state of mind. If you want to purchase that, that you can have someone put on a lot of subjects for the particular coat or shoes or whatever. So you can really decide if you want it or not. And if you decide for yourself is if it's going to be worth it or not. So that's really the idea behind the video. Um, so it's a lot of information probably and my thoughts on it, but Again, that's my train of thought when running this channel. It's going to be a lot of information from me about these pieces. So let's get into this coat. Luxor collection. This is a size 50, while I would usually go for a size 52. And because it's a jumbo coat and on the websites, some of the websites that sell these um, say that they run large, but it is a large fitting piece. So that's like saying, it's an oversized t-shirt by a size lower because it fits oversized. I think that's missing the point of the actual fit of that thing. So this size down, that's not why, but it's a size 50. So I would usually aim, I think I'm a true size large, even though that would not look the best on me right now. It's a size extra large. I would usually uh, prefer in like a t-shirt or a long sleeve at this particular moment because I like oversized or longer stuff. But then this coat, since it was so big, I figured I could try the size 50 and it worked. So I got a size smaller and you don't have to worry about not fitting in this coat. The only thing that's going to be important regarding the sizing is the length sleeve of the sleeve actually. So if you put your arms out like this, then you could probably tell that my sleeve is not really moving that much, even though I'm extending um, and pulling from the back um, to the front. So um, yeah, like overextending and the sleeve is still not pulling up. So that's pretty important in my particular reasoning of the sizing for this particular coat. You want to wear something underneath here, but not too much. These coats are crazy hot. I got this other Rick Owens puffer coat, and that's the base of the evolving idea of getting something crazy like this, just because it's a quite unique looking coat. My girlfriend said, that's looking weird. That's really weird. Um, but I can understand the point of view you're coming from, but it's really weird. Um, so for general public, this would is, is a weird coat, I would say. Um, and I agree. Uh, yeah. So going back to that puffer coat that I already had, that was really cheap. It was 650 back then on Ukes. And I figured I wanted a coat like that to have forever. But as soon as I purchased that, that's the one that has the higher color. And it's a, a black one, a really straight, simple fitting in my opinion, coat. It's really comfortable and lightweight. That's what I love about these pieces. They are really lightweight, even though this seems like a lot of fabric. It's, um, I don't want to say it's not in my way at some time, so it's a little bit impractical, but the lightweight, you don't feel like you're wearing three kilos of a coat, actually. So uh, it's a lot of air, a lot of down, and it's just comfortable. That's just... Yeah, I, I just love that. I prefer the lightweight stuff that still looks really good and still keeps you warm. Right now I'm inside, of course. I'm only wearing a t-shirt because of it, because I went shopping in the other Rick Owens puffer that I had from years ago. And what happened with that is if you wear too much stuff underneath it and you go out shopping, so you keep a steady pace going, you're going to get warm really quick. So I always just wear a t-shirt on the there 
and um, maybe a scarf so I can just open the coat and then yeah decide to style it like that a little bit but just to not overheat so it's really really warm I do live in the Netherlands Europe I don't know if that makes a difference for you people in the US because everybody's always talking about not having like a need for a particular winter coat of this size or um, the warmth that this is going to give you so the lightweight and extra fabric is yeah, the, the extra fabric is impractical but the lightweight makes up for that in my opinion so this is like an evolution piece of the previous rick owens puffer and i think honestly this is a end game puffer coat for me this is and i don't want to lie to myself because i've said this many times like if you buy this then you're done that's always a lie but you can't really if i'm being honest you can make this longer, you can make this even weirder with maybe puffed up shoulders, but that's probably not something that I would wear. So for the year, many years to come, this will be in my collection. Even if I'm just going to be wearing it a few times a year, that's just going to be it for me. And uh, it is expensive and you can have a real big debate on whether this is worth it or not, because some people want to calculate how many times they wear something and if it's worth it or not because I got a long uh, really big long g-star jacket really oversized and that was 300 euros and I would normally not give any money to g-star because I was yeah if you, if you don't like a brand in general or just never buy anything of them why would you start doing that and divide into those little streets if you could just spend the money on the brands that you love like Rick Owens but for 300 euros you don't have a coat for Rick Owens so I needed a practical coat for outside then I bought that G-Star coat that's amazing I love that but that's more practical I can wear it anywhere I'm not afraid that that that's going to get dirty or not but I've worn that so many times already and it was 300 euros that's really worth it but this is a different thing I'm not going to be wearing this thing every single day let alone uh, I think just a handful of times per year, uh, special occasions or going shopping in cities with uh, the stores that you want to see, like um, the more luxurious clothing. This is not going to be for just regular um, walk through the woods or something because it's, uh, yeah, I, I, it's too high risk. It's like high risk PKing in this coat. So uh, that's not what I prefer to do. But it means if, if it will be worth it, that's going to be only set in a few years of time. Um, so for now, it's just going to be the, like the good sides of this is it's going to be really lightweight. It's going to keep me warm. And um, I think it looks really, really good. It's a unique looking piece. It probably will catch a lot of attention because it's so ill fitting. And I've imagined about a few scenarios that where you would wear this thing that it would be really impractical like when you would ride a train somebody would be sitting next to you you would have to hide all that extra fabric somewhere or if you would go abroad and go on a plane and just stuff like that but i mean how many times are going to happen it's just overthinking it but those are the things also when driving a car you probably wouldn't want to keep wearing it but if you're like a passenger you might get in you might want to put it off when you're going to be sitting in a car and just put it on when you're getting out simply because it's so much fabric as you can probably tell it's like i'm sitting in a blanket over here and i do have to say i'm pretty comfortable it means of the heat it's pretty good um on the inside it's really huge again you don't have to worry about that not fitting on the inside because i can fit in here two or three times actually um, the only thing is the arms. The arms are really dropped down at the sides and I will give you guys overlay videos so you can see properly not when I'm sitting down but this is just because of the information aspect of this. So um, it means the sizing. I think we have that right now. Um, yeah, as I said, I can fit in this multiple times. The only thing that you need to worry about is the length of the arm or the sleeve so it's not too small because it's going to be annoying in the winter. Let's say you were wearing a glove and then you would overextend and then there's a little piece of your wrist that's going to be cold. That's annoying. That's stuff that I think about when wearing a winter coat. Um, it should be a little practical on that side. So it can be lacking on the sizing aspect of it. And the size 50 for me personally, 
So my length and weight is in the description. So you can have a look there and compare my sizing to yours um, and what size I usually take. So you can have the best perception of what you would actually want to buy for the sizing. Also, this coat is expensive. Yes, it is. It's um, quite expensive. I wouldn't recommend buying this immediately when it comes out. There's probably going to be multiple iterations of this. Um, there's a lot of pieces on Grail. I've waited a long, long time before I purchased this coat. Half a year ago, or seven months ago already, I saw this coat on sale on a English website, and it was, I think it was $8.50. And I thought, wait, it's a pretty good price. Um, then you see how much discount it is of the total price. And you're like, wow, that's pretty cool. But it's still 850. And I wasn't that into it back then. So, And it was a uh, bigger size as well. And I, um, I looked at it and I thought, I don't know. I don't know about this. So uh, I skipped on it. That's uh, the part where I bought that uh, Cerberus string um, necklace piece right here. So that's when I bought that instead of that website. So I basically skipped on that. It sold quite quickly. It was probably the lowest price because it was the last size available, which is most likely the case. And it just sold. So after that, I started to look into it and I saw another one pop up a few months later on Ukes for 1200. And then I got a personal discount code for 15 or 20% off. And I was like waiting until any extra discount happened on it and it sold, it sold. And I was um, heartbroken because I programmed my mind that I was going to be purchasing that as soon as it hit the next price, but it was already below a thousand. And uh, I wished for more because I saw the lower price and the sold prices of some other websites is always around 790 to eight. 50 something like that and sometimes they sell for more but that's just maybe because someone who has more spending money is going to be purchasing them or the sites are less known so it's going to be sold slower that they drop the price quicker so all of these things reconsidered i found this particular coat at my theresa i've purchased many many items there over the last year actually uh, i never heard of them before I tried it out. It's amazing. Great customer service and all that. So there were either two websites, uh, one other one, which I wasn't really familiar with and my Theresa. So that's where I purchased it. There was a uh, sale going on and it was 1500. And then I think that's like 35% off. And at the end of the day, there was extra 20% off, extra 15% sometimes, sometimes when you buy two items, then you get extra discount, but then you had have to add, an, an, add another item to it. So that's not practical as well, because you have to buy more. Um, so all of these discounts considered the lowest price that I could find. I, I woke up in the morning and I saw that there was an extra 30% off, I believe. And uh, that was the, the deal for me. So I immediately purchased it and yeah, that's when I got it in. It was a really, really big box. So I was thinking it was going to be huge and it, did, it really is because if you, yeah, you can probably vacuum this really small in a vacuum bag, but uh, that's not something that they're gonna do. So it's, uh, it was really well wrapped and it feels good. And that's just the entire thing about the pricing. And yeah, if it's going to be worth it, it's hard to say for right now, but I am keeping it so over the, next few years we'll probably see how it's gonna evolve into something that i absolutely love and wear all the time or is maybe i'm going to be seeing things that are really impractical about this particular coat and i don't want to wear it or maybe sell it but that's always the nice thing if you're buying something of this magnitude of price or uh, something really excessive there's always going to be someone that is willing to spend some money on it so you're always going to be getting some money back and that's why i don't mind spending more money on rick owens because there's always people who want to buy stuff that's totally beat down or slightly used and you're still going to be getting quite some money back actually on yeah on the purchase so it's just a calculation of how many times for your for yourself personally if you're going to how many times you're going to be wearing it or how many uh, like how much it is worth to you to wear it every single time. So, um, yeah, those are just things that pop into my head when wearing a coat or buying a coat like this. 
So at the end of the day, it's a little bit quality over quality buying. And this is an expensive coat. You guys know the price right now. And I have another example of why I purchased this coat and I would sell a few of my other coats, maybe a few or maybe two, just to get a smaller wardrobe because space is also an issue, especially with coats like this. This takes up the space of like three regular coats, three leather coats in my uh, wardrobe. So it's crazy to have something like this. And if you have multiple of these, it's going to be taking up a lot of space. And at the end of the day, you need the space to, to work for you. You don't need to, yeah, I wonder, don't want to have everything cramped in there. So all these Rick Owens boxes of shoes that I had, I figured I wanted to purchase those mainline double uh, mega bumpers, the mainline ones. And that's a pretty expensive shoe. I thought that was, I think at retail around 900 and I thought that's too much, but I really want those. So I'm going to like try to get it for a lower price. So I was so slow with purchasing that as well as when they were on like really good sales, but I didn't do it because it's too much money at one certain time. But when those Converse collabs came out, I purchased four pairs, 200 each, and that's 800. That's the same as that mainline pair. So what I did is um, I sold all those Converse pairs, except for the ones that I either really beat down. So the, the Turbo Dirks, I think they're called, um, the first square toe ones. Still have those. The round toe white ones are totally beat, destroyed. And I still have the metallic high top square toe ones unworn. And the lower ones I all sold because it's, um, uh, it, it became worthless to me. I would never figure out when to wear it or how to to style them. I just uh, put them to the side. I wanted to have them because they were cheap, so easily, more easily accessible. It's easier to spend 200 at a time than, yeah, it's just a train of thought actually, because why would I not purchase the mainline pair for 600, but buy four pairs of Converse I don't really care about? Uh, for eight, so makes no sense. And at the end of the day, I love the mainline pair, the mega bumpers way more than the Converse pairs altogether. So that's the point I'm making that you just want to buy stuff you actually like. And that's when the thoughts come in, if you really want an item or not, do you love it or do you just simply like it a little bit and then purchase it because the price is easier, uh, accessible. Yeah, that makes no sense to me anymore but on the other hand sometimes i still purchase those things because yeah it's just i don't know it's just how humans work i guess so before i purchased this coat i was looking everywhere also abroad but the reasons i the, like the reasons i buy a coat um like meets does need to meet some requirements actually and i've written them all down um my requirements to buy any items actually is um, needs to be European based store um, because there's no extra cost. Um, most likely going to be free shipping if you buy expensive items, a little bit easier to return. And it's also, if you return, there's less risk. Personally, I feel like uh, less risk of uh, losing that return. Sometimes when I send things abroad, things get lost or not get scanned correctly because of other distributors with the, uh, the shipping companies. Most of the time it's uh, good, but sometimes it's terrible. And if I would send this back to the States and not get my money back, I would be devastated because it's a lot of money. Um, so yeah, it does also need to have an easy return process. No store credit only returns. I, I really despise that. I don't want that. It should be easy, um, friendly uh, customer service. And my Theresa has all that. That's why I purchased there so much last year. And that's the reason why I purchased on a lot of these European websites that have all of these requirements. And yeah, I will probably buy many things again in the future because it's so simple, easy, and um, yeah, comfortable to purchase there. What I disliked about the previous buffer that I have, and I might just end up selling that to have some like money return on this one is simply because it's um, too basic. Um, you kind of evolve in that stuff. And this is a, for the wardrobe that I have, 
the pants that I have, the t-shirts, the long sleeves. This works best for the styling that I, uh, that I, that I want to do. The other one is too long, so it might end up covering a lot of the, the pairs of trousers that I have. So it, it doesn't matter what pair of trousers I wear with that coat. If I don't open the coat, you can't see anything of the entire fit of that particular trouser. And with this, I feel like you can still see enough. It's a more versatile fit for my particular wardrobe, even though this is a really odd looking coat. So I don't know how long we're actually here for already, but this was a lot of rambling and talking about this particular coat. Um, is this necessary? I don't know. Is there enough interest for this? We'll see. Please let me know because I, yeah, it, it does cost time to make these videos. And um, I just want to provide a lot of information um, so you can make the correct decision and actually commit to it and not having to return all those, uh, all those things. And, um, yeah, having the debate with yourself, if you want that or not, because I'd rather save you all the time, uh, to do buy uh, purchases like this, uh, with just one of these videos that's a little bit longer. So, you know, beforehand what you can expect or what you should think of when you're purchasing, um, yeah, expensive things like this. So what do you think of it? Is it weird? Is it cool? I think it's really cool. Um, again, I haven't worn it that much, so it means of how it ends up being outside. I, I just can't give a verdict on that yet, but probably in the future we'll do a update after a year or two. And uh, yeah, we'll just see how that goes. So thank you guys so much for watching if you made it all the way <laughs> to here. And um, thank you guys as well for all the Dr. Martin support. That was really crazy. A lot of people directed to my Instagram, asked for more sizing in different stores and... Um, yeah, glad to be able to help a lot of you with that drop. Um, yeah, it was quite a warm welcome for me uh, on the YouTube when I saw a lot of the views and uh, the comments and people being uh, happy that they got a pair or purchased at the store where I filmed that. It's really appreciated. So have a great weekend. I'll see you guys in the next one. See you.